cloud is difficult to learn. Cloud is only for techies. Cloud certifications take a long time to do. No, no, and no again. Cloud is easy to learn. And you can do some of the beginner cloud certifications in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud in less than two weeks. How do I know? I'm Ranga Karnam. I'm 10x certified in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud as well. Our courses are helping thousands of learners do their cloud certifications in AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. In this series of videos, we'll be focusing on cloud fundamentals. Once you understand the fundamentals of cloud, you will see that learning AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud becomes really, really easy. Are you ready to make learning cloud easy? Let's get started. In this video, let's focus on object storage. In the last video, we talked about the different ways to store unstructured data. If you have files, there are multiple ways to store them in the cloud. We talked about block storage, we talked about file storage, and we talked about object storage. When you want to attach a hard disk with your virtual machine, then you would go for block storage. If you'd want to create a file share and attach it with, attach it with multiple VMs, that's when you go for file storage. And object storage has a number of different use cases. In the last step, we talked about the fact that there are multiple object storage services in different clouds. Actually, each of the clouds offer different um, object storage services. Let's look at that in depth right now. So we already talked about the different object storage services in different clouds. What is the object storage service in AWS? It's S3, simple storage service, Amazon simple storage service. It's one of the most popular object storage services. And in Azure, it's Azure Blob Storage. So it's called Blob Storage in Azure. And in Google Cloud, it's called Cloud Storage. So these are the three object storage services in different clouds. And all these offer very, very simple features. You can store any kind of files. So if you have archive files, if you have uh, temporary files, which let's say I'm doing a migration and I would want to temporarily move a few files into the cloud and then use those files to copy them out into the respective database for temporary files. If you'd want to create a static website, right? So let's say I would want to host a website. I can upload files into the object storage services and I can create a static website using that. Uh, there are a lot of other use cases where like user generated content. Let's say I have a lot of content which is being uploaded by users uh, and I would want to be able to store that. Let's say they are uploading files like videos or images or profile image. So all that can be stored in the object storage devices. Typically, the simple concept in object storage is that you create something called a bucket. So you create a bucket and you can upload and download objects from the bucket. So you can upload objects and you can download objects from the bucket. So users can upload objects and download objects from this specific bucket. And to upload and download, we use a key value pair. The key is used to uniquely identify a specific element in this specific object, in, in this bucket. So you have different files which are present in here, and each of these have a separate key. And the key is what is used to identify different objects in this specific bucket. So if I have an archive file, I can give it a key and put the value as the file itself. If I would want to have users upload things, then I can have a user generated ID. You can generate an ID, use that as the key and upload the file into the bucket. So each of these object storages can help you to create unlimited number of buckets. And each of these buckets can store unlimited number of such objects. And to be able to access those objects, each of these object storage devices also provide a REST API. So you can use the REST API and say, I would want to get the value for this specific key, get the file at this specific key. Or you can use the REST API and say, I would want to upload a key at this particular, uh, or I would want to upload a key with the, or I would want to upload a file 
with this specific key. <laughs> I was struggling a little bit with the terminology there. So you want to actually upload a file using a specific key, right? So the when you call the REST API, you'd say, I would want to use this key and upload this specific file out. So instead of actually directly physically attaching something with your virtual machine, right? So whenever we talked about block storage or file storage, what you need to do is to attach it to your VM. You need to physically go to the VM and attach it. In object storage, we don't use that approach. In object storage, we would use a REST API. It's like a service. So the object storage is like a service which is offered somewhere and you can make REST API calls to upload and download. So if you want to upload a file or if you want to download it, you just make REST API calls to it. The amazing thing about the cloud storage services or the object storage services in the cloud is the fact that they offer you unlimited scale. So the size of the objects in here can be in GBs and you can store unlimited such objects in single bucket. So you can store different kinds of files in unlimited way in your object storage buckets. Object storages also offer the feature of versioning your files. So let's say you, you are worried that users would replace the file and you would lose the old file. In that kind of situation, you can also turn on versioning. So let's say I uploaded a file with the key, it becomes V1. If I upload another file with the same key, it becomes V2, V3. And at a later point in time, I can retrieve any of these objects back. So I can retrieve V1 back, V2 back, and V3 back as well. And one another features all the cloud provider, all cloud providers like S3, like Amazon S3, block storage, and cloud storage. All these offer the feature of event notifications. What is event notifications? When somebody uploads an object into a bucket, you can probably trigger, let's say, a cloud function or AWS Lambda function or an Azure function. So you can trigger an event and you can act on it. Let's say somebody is uploading an image in here. You can probably have an event notification to create a thumbnail for that specific image. You can also put a message on a queue. So let's say there is a queue which is present. And as soon as there is an object uploaded, I might want to put an event on the queue saying, OK, there is a file uploaded. Let's try and process it a little later. So event notifications is one of the features which is supported by almost all the cloud providers. Another feature which is actually very, very important, which is provided with respect to object storage in all the clouds is the differentiation in terms of the objects which are uploaded to a bucket based on your access patterns. What do I mean? Let's say I'm creating a static website. Then the files which are present in the cloud storage or the object storage will be accessed very, very frequently. Let's say I'm uploading an archive file. What is the chance that I access it very frequently? Very, very minimal. Right. So most of the times archive files will be accessed once every six months or 12 months or they'll not be accessed at or they'll not be accessed at all. So you don't want to pay the same price for things that you access frequently and things which you don't access at all. And that kind of differentiation is also provided by all the object storage services. Object storage services provide you with different storage classes. The naming for these storage classes varies a little bit from one cloud provider to another cloud provider, but, uh, but the concept remains the same, right? So the storage classes help you to differentiate between different objects which are present in a bucket. If I have an object with a storage class as standard, then it means that I would access it frequently. If let's say I have an object with a storage class as archive, then it would mean that I will access that very infrequently. And the big advantage for you is that you need to pay for pay less for the archive class. For the standard class, if you're paying X, then for this archive class, maybe you'd only be paying, like let's say for the standard class, you're paying this much amount. Maybe for the archive, you'd be paying half of that or maybe one fourth of that only. That's where uh, each of the cloud providers provide you with a lot of different storage classes. I'll give you a few examples of different storage classes in different clouds. So there are different storage classes. 
in aws example uh, kind of storage classes are standard you have one zone infrequent access so if you are going to access certain things every month or so then you can use the one zone infrequent access class and the data will only be stored in one availability zone so this will also have less availability or you can go for glacier so if you go to glacier this is considered to be archive right so you are expecting to access this maybe once every year or something like that so if you pay x for standard for one zone io maybe you would pay x by 2 and for glacier you might pay x by 4 i'm just giving you a rough idea these are not the exact numbers there are also a lot of other storage classes which are present in aws as well but it's very important to have a high level overview of this the concept of storage classes help you to differentiate how much you pay for different objects depending on the access patterns for a specific object you might want to pay more or you might want to pay less azure also offers different kinds of storage classes in azure they, it's very simply very easily named they, it's called hot and cool and archive and as usual google cloud also provides similar features in google cloud it's called standard or near line or cold line or archive so if you have backups archives which you don't expect at, to use at all you would use this storage class and if you would want to frequently access that specific thing you would use the standard class so when you are to talking about archive class retrieving it will be costly but storing it will be cheap so if I would want to access something from an archive class, I would need to pay a little bit more. But storing it is very, very cheap. For the standard tire, storing it is a uh, little expensive. It's expensive than the archive, but retrieving it back, the cost of retrieving it back is very, very less. So depending on your access patterns, you can actually use one of these storage classes. And the other amazing feature that each of the cloud providers provide is life cycle configuration this is called differently in different uh, clouds but the concept again is very very simple right when i'm creating an object i'm creating a new object in a specific bucket the chance that i'm using it is very very high after three months the chance that i'm using it is less and after a year the chance that i use it is very 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 less right so how about having that automatically done for you so if i'm creating an object when I, as soon as I create the object, it is created in standard class. What I can do is I can configure a rule saying after three months, if nobody is accessing that specific object, directly move it to cold line class. And if nobody is accessing it, even in one year, I want to move it to a archive class, right? So this kind of feature will really, really help us because this will reduce the cost of storing the objects in our buckets. So this kind of feature is called lifecycle configuration. This kind of storage class transitions are also provided by all the cloud platforms. In this video, we discussed about object storage. Whenever you want to store archive files or temporary files, or you want to create a static website, or you have user generated content, which is being uploaded by users, and you'd want to store that and retrieve it back. For example, profile pictures. In those kinds of situations, you'd make use of object storage. Object storage services in the cloud provide you with unlimited scale. You can store as much data as you would want. All that you need to do is to create a bucket and you can use key value pairs to store the files into your buckets. And object storage provide object storage services in the cloud provide you with a number of features. They provide you with versioning. They provide you with event notifications. They provide you with different storage classes based on different needs of different objects. You can optimize your costs by making use of different storage classes. And also they provide lifecycle configuration features for or lifecycle transition features for these storage classes as well. We also looked at the different storage services or the object storage services in different clouds. Amazon S3, AWS, Blob Storage, Azure, Cloud Storage in Google Cloud. I actually think all these cloud storage, all these object storage services are very, very similar. Once you understand S3, 
you would see that block storage or cloud storage are very, very similar. There are small differences with respect to availability, uh, durability, how much guarantees are there. There are differences with respect to the specific storage classes. But at a high level, the concepts remain exactly the same. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video. Do not keep it to yourself. Tell your friends and tell YouTube as well. How do you do that? Like, share and subscribe. If you are looking to get cloud certified, check out our cloud certification courses in AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. And do not forget to check out the other videos in this series of videos on cloud fundamentals. If there is a cloud topic that you are feeling it's very, very difficult to understand, do post it in the comments and we will make it simple for you. I'm sure you had a great time watching this video and I'll see you again very, very soon. Until then, here's bye from Ranga at In28 Minutes. See you soon.